Dressed up. Let me show you something here. This top my wife's an African designer. Well, she's a designer. She's African, so she's an African designer. She made this top. She has the matching things that we sort of match together. She made it for somebody's wedding. We would hit. Um, Wait, let me show you something. Let me show you something Real quick. When I became art director for WBAI, I dressed regular, whatever. But then this this uh, woman, Carolyn Oberdorf, she was at the station with the volunteers. Said. Anthony, come on now. We got to change your wardrobe. So she took me out thrift, to, to thrift shops, um, to thrift shops shopping for a new wardrobe. This way, like I got a thousand dollar Armani suit, you know, for like twenty five dollars. That kind of thing, you know. One of the things I did you see these tassel shoes. You can see them. These tassel shoes, whatever dress shoes. Well, got them a long time ago. I never wear them. Well, I wear them occasionally for the things. But this is like nineteen ninety one or something like that. And then I got those shoes, and I still wear them. But here's a trick. When you go to these thrift shop, you say, well, those shoes fit you, yeah. Because what happens, let's say, say when somebody has a bar mitzvah, you know, some kid has a bar mitzvah, especially these days, and they're 12, 13, whatever, whatever age they are, right? They have big, they have big feet. So if you, so, so they only wear it one time. Then there's this, it's in the closet for a long time. That's sooner or later somebody gets fit or goes to the thrift shop. You see what I'm saying? So you know, the thrift shops, you get a lot of things that were only wore it one time or just, you know, out of season for these really rich people, whatever it is. But you got to find the right thrift shop. Okay, what am I talking about? Oh, Easter. Going to church with my wife. Can I tell you something? Look, I actually, see, I have a spiritual advisor. He's a Yoruba, he's a Yoruba priest. And so, you now basically, if I need some spiritual things, I just call him up, you know, type him up. Gives me an answer, just like that. And then when I'm in the city, you know, when I'm in the States, you know, sometimes every once in a while they go, Rosa Kyra shells, you know, because the first question always is like, should I, you know, become a part of the culture, the Yoruba culture? And the answer is always, nah, leave that boy alone. He's, he's special. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a number of times. I just stopped getting ready. Anyway, the reason why I bring all that stuff up, I'm so through with these African Christians. This, it's a darn shame. You know, look, there's this thing. When you wake up, when you wake up in the morning, who do you wake up by? So the first person you see is a reflection of you, you know? So if I wake up, you know, next to a, 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 a whatever, then I'm going to think of myself as that. I mean, at least for an instant. You know, okay, maybe that's too complicated for you. The point is, images, TV is very important. Everything is very, very important. Magazines, you know, you have the thing where everybody looks through a magazine, they want to look like that person that's sitting on something on TV, they want to grab that. That's that kind of thing. So when you go to these Christian churches and you see nothing but white Jesuses, it just drives me nuts. <laughs> it drives me. And the images, you know, all the statues, all the saints, they're all white. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I can go to any church. You remember when they wrote, I can go to any church and go to, you know, I just can't be a part of churches, right? But now I'm going really radical. Because usually, like, okay, let me, let me go back. When I am in the States and I'm with my sister, I will go, you know, to, to have Catholic church all the time. It's like a Baptist church, really. It's, it's Catholic, but they got the stereophonic fun choirs and da da da. You know, it's in Virginia. Anyway, um, so I just, because I like to hang out with my sister, simple as that. It has nothing to do with church, okay? Okay, now, now here's the thing. All these Christians always say, come to church. No, my wife goes to church a lot, not a lot. She goes to church, you know, and they go, where's your husband, blah, 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 blah. And if they ask me, they tired of asking me. I say, look, I only go to church twice a year. Once for Christmas, you know, because that's when the cat was, you know, born, you know, and once for Easter, you know, because he was resurrected, reborn. Those are the only two times I go to church. Now I'm limited to one time, right? Now I'm only going on Easter, right? Why? Because by all accounts, <laughs> but in fact, you know, if we go back, this is uh, February, uh, Easter is uh, five, uh, okay, whatever. By all accounts, you know, if uh, Jesus was born, you know, with, with, with the lambs of, that are is in the spring of the other northern hemisphere, which would make it like by that March, April, you know, like that. So here's uh, May, that kind of thing. I think Jesus to me was a teacher. Now, if I go by numerology, right, if I go by numerology and also the Rosicrucian order, I know I'm going far afield. Just follow me on this. I believe Jesus was born the 15th of May. Was, uh, uh, one in five is, is, is number six. That's the education number. He was more of a teacher than anything. 
Okay, forget the miracle things and the spiritual thing. He's more of a teacher. So I believe he was born on the 15th of May. Right? Now, there's a thing in the Rosicrucian um, pantheon or whatever beliefs that there's, there's you, you have, uh, you go through, I think, seven uh, periods in, in, in a year. Anyway, doesn't matter. That, or maybe it's nine, seven, whatever it is. But the last one, right before your birthday, 52 days before your birthday, is your critical period. So you'll notice that a lot of people will die before their birthday. That's when they'll you know, will get severely, whatever, right before their birthday. So we're talking about, so if, if, if Jesus was born uh, May uh, 15th, that means that right here in March, you know, we're in his birthday. So, so this is what I'm trying to say is that it's so more likely he would die before his birthday. You see what I'm saying? Right before his birthday. So my whole thing is like Jesus was born on the 15th of May. Da, 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 da. That's when he was born. He died because he, he died. And that's it. That's my thing on Jesus. Um, but since I'm going to think, I have to, I'm melding two things, two traditions here in Southern Africa. One, if you go to church on Sundays, right, you will see that all the women and the women drag the children to church. The men, you know, they're in little circles drinking and stuff like that. So uh, I was in the I was in the bottle store. They call it bottle stores. I had a liquor store, bottle store. Yes, yeah. I was just I was getting something to somebody. Come on, man. I was no, I just I forgot what I did. But I saw this. This was just sitting on the shelf like this. I saw the red thing, because the red it attracted me. I said, oh, okay, what's this? So I read the bottle. You know, it's called uh, a grape-flavored liqueur. It's a grape-flavored liqueur, and it's like 7% alcohol. Now, see, grape Now, remember, when they do the sacraments, you know, in church or whatever have you, where they, you know, the, 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 the how do you say it? The, the, the body, you, you take the wafer for the body, and then you take some wine for the blood, symbolizes the blood. Now, here's the, I, I never understood this. Here's the thing. If you're going to symbolize, if the, if the ultimate form of every practice is to symbolize the body and the blood, it's a symbolic thing. You know, it's like, you know, it's not real, real. You're symbolizing it. So when they say that Jesus, see, it's red. So when they say that Jesus, you know, is going to come back, resurrection, he's going to come back, you know, that's what Easter is about. I'm going like, well, if you keep on talking about this boy, and saying his name, isn't he resurrected all the time? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> why don't you, since he's resurrected in your conscience all the time, why don't you do what he was doing? I just don't get these modern Christians. They don't. They're not. I, that, that, if you're going to take the Bible, Bible literally, literally, then you'd be. Like, you have to cut people and drink blood. Not bad. Kind of, kind of strange. I'm going to check this out. So I just took my 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 Sunday sacrament early. Just trying to be a good <laughs> heathen, <laughs> drinking blood and stuff like. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, so I'm just don't understand Christian. And so, but basically, if something's been around that long, let's cause. Think about the Catholic Church, for instance, as a corporation, the first corporation. You know, that means that any corporation, any system, can be gamed, and that's what's happening right now. All these systems are being gamed: the, the banking system, the, the government system. You know, any system can keep on being gamed. So at this particular point, however it started out pure, you know, whether it was, you know, drinking blood or not. By now, you know, you place it with wine, you know, people are just doing things in this cat's name and blah, 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 blah. They're making fictitious things about them. They're not, they're taking something literally, but you should take it. They, they, they're just messing up. But some people use it to advantage. Here's my problem with modern religions, especially. But you see it a lot here, especially here, because, you know, you see it like the Nigerians, you know, uh, not even the... Zimbabweans are not that, but it's like most of the Nigerians are probably they're clustered with their own churches. But then they don't be doing their church things. They try to get other people just to take your money. It's like um, let me put it this way: and they every single morning they're up there over there at the church, at the campus, you know, it's the church every night, whatever it is. Here's the thing: if you got to be Jesus conscious 24 hours a day, to exclusion of everything else in the world, then you're no longer you're not being religious. You're being a, a cultish. You know what I mean? You're you're. You're, you're keeping a group in the name of and you're following this person without looking at all this other stuff. Believe me, when J.C. walked the earth, he actually walked Africa all over. He wasn't saying, oh, let me not talk to that person, let me not do this. You know, you're just, no. And then when he did his ministry, but he said, hey, look, I got all this information. Go knock on people's doors and share the information. They don't want to hear it. Keep on going. They didn't say linger there and convince them, put them in chains, war on them, make sure that they're, which, which you put a yoke on it. They didn't say, he didn't say nothing like that. He said, dust your, dust your little sandals off your feet or whatever happened. Keep on moving. Spread the word. Keep on moving. It's word, word. It should be logical. This is why he'll, here's what I do. 
here's my church service every well I used to when I had to shelter and I was going to dance dance house music you know house clubs that was my church every week but let me say you know. but my sermon every week is when I listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. from the talk tainment you know um, uh, 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 internet radio uh, thing uh, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. he's my preacher every week and it's the same because he has one book he has that one, this is, this, you know, he has, they, they preach out of one book, that would be this book right here, you know what I mean, the, the book, the Neely Fuller, the Mr. Neely Fuller's book, which is his not a compensatory concept, you know, blah, 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 blah. so his book here, so this is, I just, I'll pick this up to any passage, just like a Bible, and then start reading, you know, anti-racist equal, you know, Americanism and or American way of life. Words and or deeds that have produced justice and correctness in all things, at all times, in areas, at all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Use, this, use, use of the truth is a manner that has resulted in the establishment of justice and correctness in all times in all places, in all areas of activity, a concept and or idea yet to be established in reality. So if I just take that right there, then I, I know you didn't hear what everything I said, it doesn't really matter. Then I have to, I'll dwell on that. I can do a sermon on just that thing. That's what, that's what it's all about. So once a week, you know, I listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. on, you know, as a, as a podcast, whatever it is. And hey, yeah, once in a while I pick up the book, I read something in it, maybe the spirit of thought keeps on going. But I'm gonna be spending every single day or twice or three or twenty nine nine times a week in the church, you know, in, in that grouping to the exclusion of everything else. It doesn't make any sense, you know? So anyway, so here is now let me relate this to uh, ADOS. ADOS to me it's like Again, it's like I know all these other movements out here. You know, I got, you got the, I really like the Moors, actually. You got the Moorish movement. You got the Pan-Africanists. You got the, the you know, you get, you, you get your nationalists. You got all these things. ADOS is just one of those movements. I can flirt with any movement I want, but when something needs to be done, you know what I mean? I just, I can hang out with, the, right now I'm hanging out exclusively with ADOS as far as mentality goes, you know? But I can dress like a Pan-African person, you know? I can I can hang I can well right now I'm going to an African church so this is my, but I can even take my pan African and go to but if I want to go to church and be and not be whatever be a, a, a focal point then I just wear the the, the the dress you know the the attire of that church or that thing if I go when I was in um, when I was in uh, Jordan Armand Jordan it's here this is this is Armand Jordan I don't know if you can see this picture anyway but you see I got a hajib here well you can't see it look at it. You can't see this. You can't see this. Let me. Oh, I'm just stuck in the haze. Come on. Come on. Sorry to make this so long. I gotta make my point. You're not gonna be able to see this picture anyway. So, you know, the Romans came to Jordan or whatever happened, and they put these these columns. Yeah, see? Okay, this is a place called uh, uh, Petra, like that. And we took a group picture of all the, the radio people that were this conference right here. I'm right, oh, I'm right here. You can't see me. But I'm right there. You can't notice it. But I have a hijab on, you know, the. Well, you know, the thing that they wear. And I fit right in. The folks are, it had a little beard. The folks are yapping to me in Arabic, you know. So you can wear the, the, the and usually you can be accepted to any culture if you if respect them and be respectful of what, of their, of their attire and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is, but it's the mentality that changes. It's your mentality that you carry with you no matter what you're wearing, what you're doing. If your mentality, no matter what you, um, what your mentality, if you're a mentality of a killer, in whatever church, whatever you go, you're still going to be a killer in that church. Now, whether you act on that killer, that church in your mind is something else, but you're meant to, you see what I'm saying? So it's a mentality has to, that we have to deal with right now. And right now, if I see all these, you know, these churches, all these movements, whatever have you, uh, if you're not focused on justice, okay, you know, ultimately, ultimately, the ADOS movement, the ADOS reality, I call it the ADOS reality, is um, they have to still, and what, what they're doing something, the, the overall thing still is what Mr. Manila Fuller says, we have to fight um, racism, which is to replace the system, their unfair system, with a system of justice. That's the whole thing, you know? So, that's my sermon for this morning, for this Easter morning. To you, I give it to you, me, me giving it to you, me being T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from ADES, okay, ADES, of the American descendants of chattel slavery. Oh, oh, by the way, I have to make this disclaimer. Look, I, I'm not an, I have not, 
I'm not a spokesman, nothing like that for for the movement, for the reality. Um, just a little cog in the wheel. I have a specialty that I'll be, you know, doing when, once I get to the States. But right now, I'm just yapping, 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 yapping. Then everybody's just yapping, yapping, yapping. I just hoping that I can write about, you know, uh, January people start getting focused and do their do their lane thing. Whatever their their real specialty is, aside from yapping, 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 they'll really concentrate and do that from from say July until October to the to the conference comes up in October in, in you know Louisville, Kentucky. Then we'll do that. We'll do what we're supposed to do. Anyway, I'll just give it to him. So, an American descendant of chattel slavery's desk. <laughs>